So now, what's going to happen to this over here? So again, this was drawn like an ionic bond. This was drawn like an ionic bond. How do you handle ionic bonds? How do you know when to break an ionic bond and form an ionic bond? Well, ionic bonds can only exist between charges. So anytime an atom loses its charge, it has to lose its ionic bond. This is an important principle that oftentimes doesn't get explained in the course. If, uh, if the starting materials are drawn with an ionic bond, but one of the atoms is losing its charge, then the, they have to lose the ionic bond. So this sulfur here is losing the ionic bond. The sodium is losing the ionic bond to sulfur. So how do you know when to form an ionic bond? Well, you can form an ionic bond between the new atoms with charges. Now this chloride has a charge. So uh, this would be conventionally drawn now like this. Now we would draw it as if the sodium is ionically bonded to the chloride. So um, when an atom is losing its charge, you have to break its, its ionic bond. And when new atoms are gaining new charges, they can form new um, ionic bonds. Now, this is really, I think, just conventional. In solution, these would mainly be dissociated anyway. But it's still conventional to draw them as if they were an ionic bond over here. OK, so I think we've got all the charges right. Um, oh, so um, to go back again, I should have said that the starting materials had a zero net charge. The starting materials have a zero net charge, and now the products have a zero net charge as well. So we're in good shape. Notice that the sodium here is just a spectator ion. It's not participating in the reaction. You should be familiar now with potassium and sodium. In all the reactions that you've seen in this section of the chapter, sodium and potassium are always just spectator ions. They're just spectator ions. They don't participate. They just end up ionically bonded to whichever, to whichever product ends up with a negative charge. So they don't participate in the reaction. Now, um, we should think about the stereochemistry here. So are we going to get one product or two products? Yeah, SN2 only gives you one product. Um, does it give you retention of configuration or inversion? Inversion. Inversion. We know it has to give inversion because the nucleophile has to come in opposite the leaving group uh, because of steric hindrance. We're not drawing it that way, but that's how it's going to happen. You don't have to draw the arrows that way. So we're going to have inversion. So now we should learn what's the best way. And of course, that only matters if you have a stereocenter. Is this a stereocenter? Yes. Yeah, if this wasn't a stereocenter, we wouldn't even have to worry about this. But this is a stereocenter. Now I'm going to show you the best way to invert a stereocenter. Uh, maybe I can mention the, 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 the wrong way. The wrong way is to mentally invert it in your head. Uh, that would be good if, if you can do that, but most students are not very good at mentally inverting things in your head. You might have heard that this is like turning an umbrella upside down or something. Um, but most people are not good at picturing that in their head. So instead, we're going to learn a mechanical trick for this. Have, have I discussed the single swap rule with you guys? Oh, OK. The single swap rule says that anytime you swap two groups, that always gives you the opposite configuration at a stereocenter. Anytime you swap two groups at a stereocenter, that always gives you the opposite configuration. I changed the, the wedge on the hydrogen, or the dotted line on the hydrogen to a wedge. Right. And the wedge to a dotted line, is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, um, pretty much. So actually, you might be on the right track there. So you got the hydrogen and the ethyl. Oh, yeah. So I guess that would be fine over there. Maybe you both got this right anyway. So. Because I figured out that this was R, so that I knew ah, right. that this has to be S. So, and this would be one first priority, second priority, third priority. So if I switch these, then it would go one, two, three. That's just how, well, that's the same thing as just switching these two. Um, actually, I think, so and what was your final product? So my final product would be methyl hydrogen SCH3 and then ethyl. Okay. Um, Yeah, that would work. So actually, um, at first I thought you guys were giving you the wrong stereo chemistry. That's why I was giving you this big spiel on this. And actually, it looks like you were getting it I right. Think we have different... Now, remember that there's many different ways to draw the same molecule. So you could both be right. Uh, it looks like you're both right here. Let me show you what I think is the easiest way, though, easier than the, the ways that you guys are using. So again, any single swap will give you the opposite configuration. So I can simply take any two of these groups and swap them. That, that's kind of what you were already doing. So for example, I think what you did is you swapped the hydrogen and the ethyl. That's fine. But you could have swapped the hydrogen and the methyl. Or you could have swapped the ethyl and the sulfur group over there. Any single swap. It's usually easiest to swap the groups on the wedge and the dash. So uh, I'll put the ethyl where the hydrogen used to be, and I'll put the hydrogen where the ethyl used to be. OK. Um, so yeah. you're right. Um, now, actually, the RNS method is not reliable here. You should not use the RNS method because um, you do not necessarily flip from R to S when you do SN2. And the reason is that the atomic numbers are going to change at the same time. 
the atomic numbers are going to change at the same time. What happens? So in this case, it would be the same because this would be the number one priority and this would still be the number one priority. But what if we replace this, the number one priority, with something that ends up as the number two or three priority? Well, then the whole RNS system gets thrown out of whack. So it actually is possible for an SN2 to have an S starting material and an S product if the nucleophile has a different atomic number than the leaving group. That actually is a popular trap on exams. Um, so people oftentimes get totally confused by that. They, they're saying, gee, how can my starting material and my product both be S? Well, that, that can happen if the leaving group and the nucleophile have different priorities. So you definitely shouldn't use RNS to make sure you're inverting. It's much simpler simply to first draw retention of configuration and then make a single swap. So that's the redraw and modify yeah, technique. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't change the position of mm -hmm. the hydrogen and the ethyl. I just oh. switched the... That'll work too. That work too? Yeah, okay. that's fine too. So what you did was... Yeah. You had it like this, then you, you switched the wedge yeah, and the dash. Yeah. That's also a single swap. Okay. That's also a single swap. Um, the reason, yeah, so that is fine uh, as well. That's really the same thing. You put the hydrogen on the wedge and the ethyl on the dash. So that's fine. Now, um, you might not get full credit for your picture, though, because you drew your picture. Depends on how picky your TA is, but sometimes the TAs are pretty picky. It looks to me like you drew your picture kind of like this. Um, but this is not a correct angle between these two bonds over here. Remember, this has to be tetrahedral. So you have to draw the bonds in a tetrahedral format. So the safest thing to do would be to have the same bond orientation that we had in, in, the, in, the, in the test. Obviously, the way that the instructor drew it in the test is, is acceptable to your instructor. Um, we might as well just stick with that and then make a single swap. So the safest thing is to keep the same bond orientation and then keep a single swap. Um, but remember, there's supposed to be like a 109.5 angle between these two. So we can't draw it like this in this case. So that would be wrong. Okay. Um, so this is our product. Did we get this right? Did I make the swap? Yeah, I swapped the ethyl and the hydrogen over here. Okay, so, um, so this is a good thing to have in your notes. How do you invert the configuration for SN2? The best way to invert the configuration for SN2 is first draw the molecule with the, just the same configuration and then make a single swap. Now, it's likely that you might see your TA use a different method because your TA might find it enjoyable to kind of invert this in their head, but it's better for a beginning student to just make a single swap, okay? Uh, all right, so um, what were the things that gave us trouble here? Um, the only thing that gave us trouble was the solvent. Uh, let's take a look at page one of the handout again. And let's look at the row on solvents on page one of the handout. That's near the bottom. All right, so you can see um, near the bottom of page one, SN2 prefers the polar aprotic solvent, um, and you can see that means no OH or NH bonds, whereas SN1 and E1 prefer polar protic, at least one OH or NH bonds. That's for your review there. Uh, we, we won't have time today, I guess, to discuss why polar aprotic is better um, for one or the other. It's in the second hand book. Yeah. Yeah, so the second language book actually, I think, has a good explanation of this. So you might want to go back and reread that section on solvents again now, and that might make more sense to it. It has a good explanation to that. Uh, it turns out that a polar protic solvent has steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile for SN2, and a polar protic solvent um, helps to stabilize the carbocation. So it always comes back to our big obstacles for SN1 and SN2. Um, okay, so, uh, so that was important here to decide what the mechanism was, because when you have a secondary, oftentimes it can go either way, because a secondary carbon can be either S, uh, SN2 or SN1. So uh, we have to use the, uh, the solvent there. All right, so we got a little practice with uh, our table there as well.